Hi, I'm Lana Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak, and uh, I want to thank you for tuning in today. Um, I'm going to be talking to Jeanette Rodriguez, and Jeanette is an artist, a curator, a teacher, a jewelry maker. She's, she just has her hands in a lot of different things, and um, thanks for coming today, Jeanette. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Yeah, Jeanette, of all those things that we just I just mentioned of your list, and, and I'm sure that you could add some more to it, um, what is it that you're most passionate about? I'm more passionate about teaching and obviously painting uh -huh. and creating jewelry. Um, and I really do love um, curating. Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe it's just <laughs> your passion about creating. <laughs> yeah, being creating. A, a creative person. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do you teach? I teach uh, mortar ink um, paintings to children and adults. And recently I will be teaching uh, soul painting, uh -huh. which is trying, I'm trying to get um, adults to to pretty much stop being afraid of creating art mm -hmm. and um, I've learned this from five-year-olds and even like my oldest student that she's about 62 63 years old they walk in with this fear um, and that's where I I actually got the inspiration of um, I've helped them and I said well if I create this class where I can actually help others to overcome their fear of creating art. Mm -hmm. um, I'm treating it more as um, meditation and letting go of your ego, your judgment. And um, I do a breathing technique to really like relax, relax you and, um, and kind of to bring you back when you were a child where you had like no negative thoughts and you just yeah. will create. You yeah, know? didn't have the inhibitions. Yeah. I, the, the, I th mm. thought of doing a painting really terrifies me. Um, I used to paint, um, mm -hmm. you know, dabble in it, and mm -hmm. I used to draw a lot and, okay. um, you know, but now I, for years I have kind of restricted myself to photography. Okay. So, um, you know, maybe I need to take your class. I think you should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you get people started on, on just easing into it? Um, well, pretty much um, the whole relaxing thing, the breathing in, everything's in threes. So um, we will start with a breathing technique and we will also work with three brushes, um, three colors. Um, I'm also treating it in kind of like a spiritual way because three is is a spiritual number. So um, kind of just to help people to get out of their heads. And, um, and I will have them, you know, meditate and visualize. So I will go through this process where they can actually visualize you know, a circle. And, um, and they will be painting in a circle also because the circle is also um, very spiritual. Uh -huh. You'll you'll be se seated in a circle, or they'll be we will be circular We things? will be seated in a circle. Um, I actually want everyone to sit on the floor and be comfortable. Um, bring a cushion, and um, and then all the sheets. Um, pretty much, I've drawn a circle. So you s you begin with a circle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. And and what kind of materials are you working with? We will be working with photo paper, um, digital paper and um, um, water-based inks. Uh -huh. I don't want to use the alcohol inks because of the fumes, even though I will be teaching alcohol inks, but that's a different class. Right, right, and, and where are you teaching? I will be teaching soul painting at Arts on the Lake, and that's in Carmel, and uh, my alcohol ink classes I teach at the Front Street Gallery. And I also teach wire wrapping at the Front Street Gallery. Okay, and that's the jewel. That's yes, jewelry. Yes, that's pretty much yeah. learning how to wrap a yeah. stone. Yeah. Crystals. Yeah. Well, so since you mentioned the um, alcohol ink, let's <laughs> let's talk about your paintings a little bit. Okay. Okay. You have a new series. Yes, my thirteenth series, and um, and here they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about it. I, I mean, some of these are figurative, which. Um, I, I'm not always used to seeing in your paintings. Right. Well, it's interesting about the journey as an artist. Um, you know, for the past couple of years, um, there was a time that I did a lot of figure drawing. Uh -huh. And I took a lot of classes. Um, 
took a lot of drawing classes at the Sama Gandhi Club in, in New York. In New York City. And, um, and then, I don't know, somewhere along the way, I kind of stopped drawing figures and I went more towards nature, landscapes, and um, started painting hummingbirds and flowers right. and trees. So I went into that direction and, um, and then, re not, uh, let's see, about, about maybe a little less than, it's got to be at least a little two years ago, maybe a little more, I met this, um, this really attractive young man in his early 30s who walked into the gallery and um, he was joined in by the jewelry that was in the window, which was actually my jewelry. Yeah. And it um, turned out his mom used to make pendants um, with sea glass. And his father um, was also um, into photography. So we started talking and I noticed some tattoos. And I've always loved tattoos. Yeah. I always thought of getting myself one, but it never happened. Um, but it's anyway. It's too late. You know, it's just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was actually designing one for myself, but you know, then I, I don't know. The older I got, it changed my mind. So I was admiring his tattoos. Um, I actually had seen it like on his sleeve. And then um, we became friends. And then like a couple weeks after that, he came in and he showed me the back, like he's covered in tattoos. Yeah. In he's got um, at least, um, I believe he said 11 tattoos. And they all represent um, some type of belief or incident in his life. Um, three of the tattoos are um, dedication to his mother, and, mm -hmm. and uh, the other, and another three, are dedicated to his father. And um, so I was really intrigued by his tattoos and also his body. Um, he takes care of himself. He works out. Yeah. He eats healthy. Um, and so he was actually fasting, and we've we've become really good friends. He was fasting, and then um, he sent me a picture of how the results right and this is the first painting when oh, I saw the okay. picture I immediately was inspired to create this painting which I call 13 yeah and okay. that's pretty much how it began and um, and then the 13 pretty much represents a turning point um, in his life that really it was a positive turning point in his life a good thing so he has it to kind of like a reminder uh -huh. And, um, and then the life um, tattoo, um, basically, it's um, you never know whose life your hands are in. And there's actually these hands that are holding the life tattoo, you know, the, the, the lettering. Thing is, the hands are so light that it's hard for me to even draw them yeah. because it's hard to see them. So, um, so we've become good friends. And there has been like, he has all these layers of, things that have happened to him in his life. And, um, and that's where um, Unrevealed pretty much is part of, you know, like all the layers. I mean, we all have layers. Right, yes. You know, we yeah. all have layers. Yeah. So Unrevealed was inspired by one of the um, events that he had um, shared with me. And, um, and then after 13, I told him to send me more pictures because I wanted to do a series. Right. And that's pretty much how it started. So then after 13, I actually did um, Solar Plexus 13. And at, this, at the time, I was doing this meditation uh, in clearing your chakras. Mm -hmm. And um, for some reason, when I started working on this painting, I started thinking of the masculine energy and um, the root chakra and the solar Plex chakra, and so, and the colors pretty much represent that. Yeah. So, um, and then, and then the last painting I did, um, this one's called Life 13, because basically it's also related to, um, you know, he lost his mom, he lost his father when he was 16, mm. and then a couple of years after that, um, I think in his early 30s, he lost his mother. Um, so, when he was actually um, sharing this with me, I felt the pain. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I have my, my parents, and I can't imagine losing my parents. Yeah. And so I felt this deepness, this like, connection of, wow, you know. And so it inspired me to create Life 13, which is 
a different palette. And that's why it's darker. Much darker, yeah. 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 So that's pretty much how this all started. Yeah. 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 So do you see it continuing? Um, you know, what's interesting about these, I think I like working in threes. So I think that this part will. And I did start another one. And, um, but then I realized I didn't want to do just his body. I felt like I was more drawn to like the masculine and feminine energy. So that's why this one is my last painting that I just did like a, about a week ago. Yeah. And, um, and this is called Ying and Yang. And um, I'm working on a new show at the Front Street Gallery called Unity. Mm -hmm. So this is also yes. part of it's that. It's going to be in that show. Unity. Oh, good. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So that's how yeah. it's all tied in. Yeah. Jeanette, is it harder to do figurative work when you're using the UPO and, and the inks? Because I know that they kind of move around a lot. It's, it's not like painting with oil where it stays there. Right. Well, you know, over the years I have, I get these ideas and I, and I practice um, different techniques, you know, like I apply my watercolor techniques to my inks. Yeah. But the, lately, um, I've been able to control it a little more because um, I let it dry and then I, with the alcohol, with the paintbrush dipped in alcohol, I can manipulate the inks. Um, with this particular painting, I did more like, I kept working on it um, and waiting for the ink to almost be dry. And, and I just kept just with the brush, just hitting that area yeah. to kind of create almost like a layer. Um, I mean, everything is layered, but um, applying the ink over and over again and um, working with the brush to kind of make it sticky. Uh -huh. um, so I'm able to even control it even more now. So yeah, I'm, ev I'm always learning. That's why I love this medium yeah. because I'm always learning and I always get these different ideas of, well, let me try this, let me try that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's how this one, you know, I'm like, okay, I think I have something yeah. new, you know? Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's great yeah. seeing a new direction. I mean, I yeah. love your trees. <laughs> Thank you. I really think they're so wonderful, but this is, I really like this too. Um, mm -hmm. Jeanette, you said something about um, you're gonna be part of a, a 100 exhibition over in Beacon? Yes. What is that? Um, well, um, Bibiana uh, Matthews um, invited um, 100 artists, yeah. female artists, to be part of the celebration. And it's basically, um, you know, like the history of, of, of how women, you know, have changed the uh -huh. movement. And so um, it's in the Howland Culture Center. And I've never been there. Yeah. So oh, it's I'm a great really space. excited about it. Yeah. And yeah. that'll be, I believe, the opening is March 3rd from 3 to 4. Five, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a great space. Oh, um, well. That's a lot of a lot of work to have in this space. I know. It's like I, you know, I admire her because a hundred pieces mm -hmm. in a show. That's yeah. To yeah. Hang all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's got two levels, but it's it's kind of hard to get up to the the second level. It's just kind of like a a, a balcony around the interior of the building it's it's a very beautiful building though mm. um, and uh, I'm sure you'll have uh, you know a good crowd there and everything yeah I could you know. I could imagine how it is going to be crowded yeah yeah so, so. <laughs> that's it for tonight okay our time is up and I want to thank you so much well, for coming thank you for inviting I me I really appreciate it <laughs>